When I first created the accounts, obviously I didn't have a grand plan. It was in regards to solving one case. But then once a couple of years had gone by and I was seeing the potential for social media, uh, we had that quandary in regards to do we stay stick as simple corporate accounts or do we um, branch out and do we go into individual accounts or accounts based upon you know specialized units. Uh, so we just got another message, uh, just said there's uh, another shoplifter at a store downtown um, on our group messaging app. Uh, so we'll see what's going on. So they have a shoplifter and they need some help. So I'm going to head down here with my partner Sarah. Gonna pull up on scene here. Uh, can we get a court date and a fingerprint date for a Form 9 release and can you send to the terminal of 133? Thank you, Phil. There's the Form 9s. So I'm Constable Steve Koopman. I'm assigned to C Platoon and Uniform Patrol Division. And currently I am specifically and solely assigned to the Twitter account of KP underscore patrol. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Phil Wisniak. I'm a constable at the Kingston Police. Um, I'm specifically assigned to our beat unit and our bike squad. So I work downtown. Um, and the social media accounts that I, uh, that I handle is uh, Instagram and Twitter and it's KP underscore beat cop. I think each police service has a different and unique story in regards to how they eventually implemented social media. Uh, Kingston Police was an early adopter, but I originally was a detective in the major crime unit and I was looking to solve one case and one case only. And it was one where there were a lot of witnesses from out of town and I realized that local media potentially wasn't going to reach uh, those persons. And at that time, this was in 2008-2009, uh, I realized that social media was really starting to blossom and that there were some very few police services that were starting to dip their toes into the water of social media. And from there we had created a couple of our basic accounts, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and I can't recall if we uh, created Twitter initially from that outset. And within three days we actually had the accused uh, through his lawyer contact Kingston Police and surrender himself. And he was actually from the Ottawa region. And we had multiple Crime Stoppers tips that came in after him surrendering himself that actually identified him and they said it was as a reason of seeing it through social media that they contacted Kingston Police. Policing is changing where we're engaging more uh, with the community and letting them know what we do day to day. Um, so we were looking into our core unit as we have many different officers who have many different roles in our community. I will go through uh, my social media account and look for uh, interesting stories related to my job. I've taken some more serious uh, issues on human trafficking, uh, indigenous matters, uh, matters of security to the uh, Muslim community. I think a, a lot of our stuff is, is covered by our corporate account, the actual Kingston Police account. So if we're trying to get a message out to the public as a whole, the best avenue is through our corporate account. Um, which was run by Steve Koopman, now by Cameron Mack. And again, with the expansion of our social media, Steve Koopman now has KP Patrol um, to continue on with his followers. So I, I, I look at it as, as being the traffic guy. I mean, that's one of the most common complaints we have in the city. It's about speeding, stop signs, general driving complaints, not signal, improper turns. I try to generate posts that are interesting for the public and maybe unusual.
so just discussing the third call of the night that we went to and this is where again I have to be a little bit careful because uh, right now what I've got drafted is third call of the night dash woman we frequently deal with regarding mental health issues found breathing uh, but unresponsive possibly a prescription medication overdose and both FPS paramedics meaning Frontenac Paramedic Service uh, and K-Town Fire meaning Kingston uh, Fire and Rescue attended and then transported by EMS to uh, Kingston HSC which is obviously sort of the Kingston General Hospital. So I don't see anything wrong with that so far looking at it but I have to make sure I'm not sort of giving anything like maybe her age or any description of her. We have to look out for officer safety, we have to protect victim rights, we don't want to give away locations, uh, there can be investigative techniques or an ongoing investigation that I don't want to compromise by me um, posting uh, and sometimes in essence real time through social media. I try and do it compassionately, I try and do it from an understanding perspective uh, at the same time too. I think it's important that again the community and the citizens of Kingston sort of know what we're dealing with and the fact that there are problems and challenges and issues. If you get too conservative or you get too corporate, then it just simply becomes boring. So you've got to find that little bit of a sweet spot. The problem is, what is the sweet spot? Yeah. And even after social media being you know, out and about and being used for roughly a decade or more now, is uh, the line is constantly being moved. Because the things that we do now, no one would have dared to have done a decade ago. And who knows where we'll go from there. I absolutely love constructive criticism. I, I, always open to it and I'm, I'm always happy to talk about it and if anything I find too many people don't want to approach it or they immediately uh, say don't talk to the trolls or it's simply not worth it don't engage and I find sometimes it's too simplistic a solution and it's also not overly productive um, because I'm like well no sometimes people simply don't understand what we're doing or maybe we haven't explained it well enough or they just haven't considered our perspective and if I can give that to them then sometimes that actually has worked the person's like I never thought of that but then the flip side to it is that I don't, sometimes I know that person is either anti-police or they have an agenda, or I know I'm not gonna be able to have them understand my perspective or the context from which I'm trying to bring it forward in. But the thing is, is that it's not a conversation between the two of us, or at least it's not a private one, is that there's dozens or hundreds or thousands of others that are seeing that. And even though I may not educate him or get him to understand where we're coming from, there's so many others that are. Um, aside from the social media stuff and putting out the alerts, um, we've been using an app too, uh, specifically on our phones. It's called GroupMe, so it's a group conversation app. And the way that works is we have over 100 people and from the downtown core, there's store owners, delivery people, store staff, everyone who kind of keeps the downtown running. And uh, if something happens downtown, my partner and I could, could put out an alert. You know, there's a missing person downtown, there's a car accident, but also the store owners or, you know, the people that make downtown run, they could put out alerts too and have that kind of alert. So if someone steals from their store, they're able to take a photo of that person just stole or from their surveillance photo. And then it kind of filters out for all the downtown. And then people are able to like, keep an eye out if that person comes in their store. So we might pop in there and just speak with them quickly. It might be to add them to our, uh, our group app. So, I mean, we don't have all the stores downtown yet. Um, a lot of it too, it's kind of getting word by mouth. Rather it's, you know, the people next to each other, they're, they're asking to, about the app and getting in, in on it. So yeah, if you guys want to see, I'll show you how it works. So it's GroupMe, that's the app. It's just a group conversation app. So we have a group here, Stars Kingston Downtown Businesses. There's over 115 members, so it's all the people in the downtown area. There's store owners, staff from different stores. Chris is on it from the delivery. So, and the way it works is kind of like other stores could be like, hey, we have a panhandler in our store. Phil, Phil or Sarah, if you're around, do you mind coming along? So it's kind of more quicker than calling the calling and getting a frontline officer. So if we're working, we could see this. Yeah, um, we could use it for our kind of advantage too. Like if there's like, hey, there's a missing person downtown, we could send out a picture. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just, the conditions are pretty bad outside right now. So a lot of wet snow, the roads are getting pretty wet. So with uh, social media, one of the tools we could have is uh, we could update um, our public and our community, um, let them know about the weather conditions in the roads. 
pop the picture right in there and it'll just say current weather and hashtag YGK and it'll say at Kingston Police reminding you to drive safe and leave space when behind other vehicles. And we'll throw that out, put it a tweet, and there you go. There's our interaction with our community through social media. In terms of successes, there can be, it's multi-pronged in, in regards to have we become more popular, and I think that's the least important one. You know, some people uh, um, can quote the fact that we went viral a couple of times, that we even were brought up to a late night show because of the fact that we talked about someone being the Grinch during a Christmas parade. Um, but in essence, those to me are the least important. Uh, if it grows our user base, great, uh, but ultimately I want our user base and our followers to be from Kingston and the region and the area because that's who we're trying to educate, that's who we're trying to inform, and they're the ones that are helping us reciprocally in regards to solving investigations. I think what it does is uh, engage the community in a way that uh, opens up a communication that didn't exist before. I remember when I started policing, we didn't have cell phones. Nobody had a cell phone. There was one in the building and it was humongous. And uh, now we can engage the community and it is not that much work. It doesn't take that much work to uh, post something, retweet a few things, keep your page fresh, keep the community interested. And it allows for that communication for when things go wrong, it's easier to start that conversation when there's already a communication in place rather than have to start up a communication with the community and uh, now they have a platform to be heard.